Hey, Joe. Hey, Yoris. Heard you're working on some design patterns book or something like that. I, I presented some design patterns at the DEF CON 1. Uh, that was before they accidentally deleted all the videos from the YouTube channel. So now we have to redo it ourselves and uh, share these insights with our, uh, with our listeners. I heard we're good at making videos or that some people watch them. Is that true? Yeah, like half the audience in uh, in London has seen one of our videos before, so we have quite quite the, the subscription base. Well, let's keep making some then. So this uh, this first design pattern, uh, event lock. What what are we trying to do here? I think the idea is to um, establish some best practice around building dis decentralized applications. Um, and uh, and make sure that all of the different pieces that you need are kind of clearly explained in, in place. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we've been defining these, these contracts ourselves and also looking at a lot of contracts from the community. And we actually see a couple of these emerging patterns out there that can be, can be used. I guess sometimes you have things that you reuse in the context of multiple decentralized applications as well. So, uh, in fact, that's sort of the idea of a design pattern, isn't it? Yeah, that's, uh, that's the thought behind it. So... And then you have a, you get a lot of big books that you can throw around. And, and then you can charge higher rates, I think, once yeah. you have big books. Yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 I like that. So the first pattern, uh, event log pattern. Um, yeah, for, so for each of these patterns, we have like a certain structure, how we, how we approach them. So mm -hmm. there's a, the catchy name to it. Um, we describe the, the, the problem that's happening and yeah. where you can apply this uh, pattern. Then the context, what, what's the context again? Uh, I think the context is, you know, when you would actually use this. Yeah, and same, so. same with forces, right? So, so sometimes there's a, there's a trade-off mm -hmm. between, between quality, between performance, there may be some side effects that are intended or not, so that's, uh, that's what listed on the forces. Then we, then we mention a solution, so how would you actually implement this? And we try to give you an example from the out of the, the, the Ethereum community as well. So some source code that you can look at where we've seen this uh, pattern being, uh, being applied. That makes pretty sense. good sense to me. Yeah. Where, where do we get this from? Some some other design patterns say. Yeah, yeah, this is like the, the standard for the, the, the design patterns approach, especially yeah. like the, the gang of four designs patterns from the Java world, objective-oriented programming is, uh, is doing this. So why? Yeah. Why not just uh, try to? Yeah, if you have a good the, standard, why not just use it? No. Yeah. So uh, you said catchy names. This seems like a pretty catchy name. That e event log. Event log, right? Yeah. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, pretty trivial. But uh, the, 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 the real problem is like you're you're having your decentralized application, and you want to see what's the, what's happening in it. What's what's the state? What's what are the transitions? And and for the purpose of showing that in a user interface or or getting some outputs outside of the context of the of the dApp itself. So you want to display it somewhere, you want to feed it to a bot somewhere, you want to you want to direct your drones in a, in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And for that you would use the, the event lock. And there's some, some additional ones, right? So using ev events are natively supported in uh, in Ethereum, also in the, the Solidity contract language. So you can decide which, which events you want to emit, you can Put down some some topics for them. So maybe which which was the user account that triggered the event, or in what location, or which was the URL for the for the context. And all these things are just helping you in your user interface or in the in the actual interface that's processing the events or filtering the results and narrowing down the, the interesting information from from all the other all the other noise. Um, and pretty important is I mean we've been looking at the, the gas prices of contracts yeah. in the in the past and just. You, so you could store this in the in the contract storage itself, mm -hmm. but it's very expensive. And I think uh, storing it, not storing it, but, but just emitting event, it's like well, ten ten times cheaper, or maybe even uh, even more than uh, than that. So it's a cheap way to communicate something to the uh, to the outside world. So you're emitting an event, but you're not actually storing it. Yeah, then. yeah, true. Well, it's, it's being stored on it's the on the blockchain, but you cannot actually, and it's also a drawback. So you cannot from one contract. Go into the event log and inspect events from from uh, from another contract. So That's you really right. need to store it in some other off-chain environment. To have yeah, that's where that's where you that's where you're processing it. 
Although I suppose this is one of these use cases for multiple chains or something, because you could store it in a lower cost storage kind of chain. Yeah, Not quite possibly, like right? That. So you could have like a, another chain inspecting, and then you can. I mean, that's another. That's another kind of pattern, but like a data feed. So you could yeah. have an event data feed inspecting the state of, of other of other other chains. But yeah. uh, that's that's getting a bit uh, that's getting a bit recursive. Yeah. So yeah, what's the solution to this? So you. You emit an event from the from the contract itself mm -hmm. um, when an action happens, possibly providing some arguments, some kind of parameters, like in in, in which case this actually happened, which user, which account was affected, uh, was it successful, was it not successful, and then in the user interface you can actually uh, create a, a filter on these events. So you can subscribe, basically a subscription. So you can subscribe to these events from from happening. You can watch them. And if they get triggered, then you you know that you need to update your user interface or you display something uh, something to the uh, to the outside. So what else do we have here? So an example. Ooh, actual code. So this code example comes from uh, Y Fund, the crowdfunding. Uh, oh, I think we created bounties for that, didn't we? Once actually, yeah, we we did, and uh, Nick uh, Nick Dodson implemented it in, yeah. uh, in Y Fund. Yeah. And as you can see here, in uh, lines uh, 65 till 68, yeah. there are a couple important events that are that are there. Um, so when a new campaign is created, an event gets triggered, when somebody contributes, when mm -hmm. there's a payout, and when there's a refund as well. And you see there are the, these parameters there. Mm -hmm. um, but interestingly, you can even even something maybe your 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 dev is not actually doing something with the the event right now. Mm -hmm. But it could allow others to create user interfaces or dashboards or interact on your on your contract and, and do things that you didn't think of yourself. So it's always yeah. wise to uh, to use these kind of events to mm -hmm. uh, to give feedback. Well, I've got to say I'm impressed. So, so how do you like your first pattern? I, I'm I'm pretty impressed here, um, yours. It seems like this is something that we would be able to pretty easily insert into some of the projects I'm working on and would be kind of a, a valuable thing to have some kind of standardized way of, um, of interacting with um, and just making sure that it exists when it when it needs to be there so all right looking forward to the to the next uh, to the next pattern